Okay, so uh, I'm Charles Watkinson, uh, uh, Associate University Librarian for Publishing at Michigan. Uh, so I'm uh, in charge of the sort of production and distribution um, angle uh, for Level Press, a partner with Amherst. Uh, and um, Fulcrum update, so just as a reminder, Fulcrum is the open source publishing platform uh, that uh, Level Press operates on. It always seems sort of uh, interesting that it's uh, lever on fulcrum and it's amazing that that was never designed to be the case but it's just perfect that it ended up that way um, so just in general with fulcrum um, we continue to expand and grow the platform uh, the uh, there is still funding coming from the andrew w mellon foundation but this is uh, uh, almost self-sustaining from uh, the um, collections that we are building uh, on the platform and uh, we just updated our, our website. And the case studies here uh, represent uh, three different uh, business models uh, for publishers who actually are using Fulcrum. One is a, an, a single title that a publisher wants an enriched uh, kind of companion website for, or an enriched enhanced ebook and companion website. And that's an example at the top from University of North Carolina Press, one of our clients. Um, the second example is a hosted publisher, and that's where uh, Lever Press fits and also Amherst College Press, and we're talking to a couple of other presses at the moment. And last is a collection sold to libraries, and that's where uh, we're getting most of the revenue from to sustain Fulcrum, and we just launched British Archaeological Reports um, in March. Uh, that is a collection of 3,000 archaeological reports never available before electronically. And we also have uh, the association, uh, sorry, the, uh, um, the ACLS, uh, American College uh, Council of Learned Societies Humanities ebook collection with five and a half thousand volumes, and the University of Michigan Press ebook collection with about uh, 1,500. So in total, there are about 10,000 books now hosted on Fulcrum. Um, so that's generally what's happening. So just reassurance that this is a stable platform and will be there for the long term. Um, let's move uh, forward, please. So just more specifically around Lever Press, um, our, uh, one of our big focuses uh, this year was relaunching the Lever Press website um, as an overlay to Fulcrum. Uh, and so what you um, see uh, now is a very integrated experience for the user. So the user will go to the Lever Press website um, and then we'll uh, seamlessly move to the Fulcrum Reader and the Fulcrum Repository. And the Lever Press website is managed through a content management system behind the scenes um, by uh, Beth and uh, Hannah. But uh, this is a much more integrated experience than previously. And this is all open source uh, software, um, uh, 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 open source um, all the way. Um, just to say, journals are coming, so we formed an agreement with Janeway, uh, which many of you will know at Birkbeck College uh, in London, run by Martin Eve, and that will be a co-development agreement where we'll launch journals on Fulcrum uh, uh, in, uh, in the spring of 2021. Um, so that offers a new opportunity for um, Hannah and, um, and Beth in terms of new types of publication. Um, next slide, please. So uh, I think one of the really interesting uh, uh, questions on our minds, as uh, um, actually ha Hannah also raised, is what, uh, what do we change about the publishing process? And especially, uh, what can one do with an open access book, a fully open access book, that one couldn't do before? And one of the uh, big uh, learnings here is definitely uh, that one can teach in new ways. And so we've been focusing a lot on uh, improved uh, instructional tools. Uh, so here's an example uh, of a particular book, Make It New, uh, Reshaping Jazz in the 21st Century. Um, and uh, we uh, recently uh, integrated the Hypothesis um, open annotation uh, software into uh, Fulcrum. and um, that is a tool that is being used extensively now in classrooms, and it's being used by professors uh, who want to have a, a classroom discussion based around annotating a text together. So the use case here is um, a group of students 
um, who are asked to go in and um, mark up um, a, a book together in a private space um, ahead of a class. Um, and uh, they can link in uh, video, they can link in text, they can do all kinds of annotation, and then uh, that's a very deep reading experience of the text. So that's now available um, for use. Um, we're also seeing that the uh, associated resources uh, that each have an individual identifier, and just a reminder that this is kind of the secret source of Fulcrum, the ability to have associated resources uh, integrated in the book, they are being used independently in open educational resource contexts. So we're seeing that people are picking up videos as well as the text and integrating them into their own teaching. So that's just an example here of a, of a, a video, separately identified video resource that can be integrated from Make It New. And then the final uh, 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 thing uh, here where it says Google Play, this is kind of uh, uh, interesting. Um, so uh, one of the stories of this year has been the huge growth in uh, audiobooks and podcasts. Um, this is a way that students really want to consume uh, information. And so we've just been piloting a new tool from uh, Google, which is, um, and we're a beta tester on this. So this is a, a, an auto-narrated auto um, uh, audiobook um, using an uh, AI voices. Um, and uh, I've just put a link into the chat where you can sort of hear Engineering Man uh, Manhood, which is one of the recent books, being read by a computer called uh, Matt. So narrated by Matt, um, and uh, I'll be interested to hear what you think of it. And um, it's, uh, it's a really interesting way of creating audiobooks in an affordable way. And by affordable, we mean zero price for Lever Press. Um, and the Lever Press titles are now available on the Play Store for free as auto-narrated audiobooks with, a couple, of, uh, with a, uh, a couple of exceptions where we have unusual issues. The, the unusual issues are generally to do with images, that uh, Matt is not very good at dealing with images yet. Um, next slide, please. So it's still me, and uh, just a little bit about usage. So uh, next slide, please. So firstly, uh, quantitative data. So we've been tracking usage of Leverpress titles, um, and these are some numbers um, uh, gathered over the last uh, year from October 1st to the end of September. Um, and uh, so the Lever Press titles appear on several different platforms that we have direct relationships with. They're probably being redeposited onto all kinds of other platforms because, of course, they're Creative Commons licensed. But these are the ones where we have tracking um, relationships that will deliver us usage stats. Um, JSTOR is by far the biggest in terms of usage outside the, the Fulcrum platform. Project Muse, OARPEN is the European open access um, uh, database closely related to the directory of open access books where, the, where Lever Press uh, titles are also listed. Uh, Fulcrum is, is our own platform, of course. Open Research Library is relatively new. It's connected to Knowledge Unlatched and still is a very small provider. And then you can see the totals are uh, highlight here in blue. And I've ranked these books by uh, the number of uses. And you can see that over this last year, there have been around 75,000 um, uses. Uh, what one means by use in the quantitative space is still rather up in the air. So that's where those abbreviations come in under each of the platform names. So um, uh, TIR is uh, um, total item requests which is a count of, count of five um, standard, total item requests. Um, and uh, BC means by chapter. So JSTOR presents the level press titles chapter by chapter, and they provide total item requests. Muse the same. OARPEN presents the whole book, WB, as does Fulcrum, um, and as does ORL. Sorry for the N that's crept in there. I think a cat may have stepped on my keyboard, but it should be WB there as well. 
So the total is not necessarily apples to apples, but what we're trying to do, working with the Open Access eBook Usage Data Trust, is to normalize these numbers so that you will have much better uh, indications of how platforms are doing apples to apples. Um, I think it is true to say that JSTOR is the big animal in this space. Um, and what we ha have heard from JSTOR is that their open access books got 100% uh, more usage uh, during the last uh, few months than they had in the previous period. Um, and there's been a, a big pandemic boost to open access book usage as for all eBooks. Um, AM stands for Outmetric. So we have the Outmetric buttons turned on. As I'll point out in a moment, uh, metricizing out metric is a little bit uh, dubious um, uh, uh, and uh, it really is the stories behind these numbers that are interesting. Sale units are shown there and sale dollars are shown next to the sale units. So anyhow, I'm glad the slides will be sent around. I know this is a lot of data. Um, next slide, please. This is just a visualization from Project Muse that has nice data reporting behind the back end. And I really wanted to just show uh, the, the, the bump in use. So you can see that uh, a black curve uh, on the left uh, shows usage of uh, lever press books this year versus previous years. Uh, no, I beg your pardon. It shows, it, no, it doesn't. It, but it, what it actually shows is different books being used. But you'll see that the pattern of usage is, is the same, which is March and April, there was a big bump. And then there was a little bit of a downturn in May. And then June, July, there's another big bump. And that is the pattern that all publishers have been seeing for uh, ebook use during the pandemic, which is interesting. The other, uh, uh, the colorful uh, bar chart, um, is uh, interesting um, because it shows the international nature of the use. So prior to uh, uh, the pandemic, gated ebooks were primarily being used uh, in the US when they were published by US publishers. As soon as books went free to read, the international use really blew up. And that's clear with the open access books as well. So you can see only 25% of the use on Muse was in the US. And we're seeing huge reach for the lever press titles around the world. Um, and uh, uh, I just wanted to answer Anne's question uh, here. I wonder if e-access actually drives print sales. That's a very, that's a big uh, and interesting question. There have been studies, but actually I think we'll see some really strong studies come out this year because it's been a much larger period to experiment with. And I will say that Project Muse has shared that for Johns Hopkins University press books made free to read during the pandemic, they have seen no negative um, effect on sales on print sales. Now, this is an unusual period, of course, and many libraries were not accepting print books. Um, so that's kind of all the more remarkable, uh, you know, the, all the re more remarkable that their print sales have been robust and the e-books being free to read has not impacted print sales. So whether they drive print sales or not is a question, but the negative impact on print sales is not, as, is not substantial from all we see at the moment. Um, the data here, IP log analysis, uh, is um, actually uh, from a special analysis we commissioned from the IP registry um, uh, for the period March to June 2020. So this is for lever press titles. And what the IP registry does is they have 64,000 institutional IP ranges recognized. So they can recognize 64,000 institutions from IP logs, which is um, uh, allows a fairly uh, robust view of where institutional usage is happening for Lever Press. So we saw 120 institutions from 26 countries with Boise State, actually the largest user for some reason. Um, over 85% um, uh, is uh, from the US in terms of institutional use. And Irene's uh, message about getting the IP log analysis is high for College of Worcester due to putting hot links in our catalog records. I would say absolutely. This is what we learned that institutions who do include open access books in their library catalogs, they are doing a huge favor to the open access movement because uh, we were seeing that the institutions who've done that were by far the highest users in terms of IP um, 
log recognized use. Individual users are really interesting because uh, these are everybody who didn't come to the books via an IP, institutional IP address. And what's really fascinating there is uh, just the sheer number from other countries. Of course, what was also happening is that, uh, you know, US users don't need to go in through their library catalogs to get at Lever Press books. Um, but, uh, you know, now we see this huge increase in uh, use from across uh, the world. Um, the other interesting thing in the context of what other publishers are learning is um, the role of Turkey um, and India. So those are the two places where JSTOR has also been extremely surprised by the level of use and University of Michigan Press as well. So Turkey and India are showing up high on everybody's list and Turkey particularly, I think, was a surprise to many publishers for academic content. Uh, next slide, please. So lastly, qualitative data, and it really is the stories behind the numbers that I think are really interesting. So one thing we've recently done is we've set up um, a fairly unobtrusive um, uh, uh, little survey pop-up um, on all open access books on Fulcrum. And here on the right is um, uh, an example of what it looks like on engineering manhood. So it's certainly not required, and people are just invited if they wouldn't mind taking the survey. And as soon as they click on it, it goes away. So it only pops up once, and it will never pop up again during their session on Fulcrum. Um, the theory here is that there is kind of an unbalanced reciprocity going on, that basically uh, we're giving a, the user a book uh, for free, and so we have an expectation that perhaps they'll want to give something back. And indeed, that's proven to be the case, that we're having a lot of responses through this survey. Not that many yet on Lever Press titles. We've only received about 30 responses since we launched this in August. But I think we'll continue to see responses, and they'll continue to be interesting. But we've received over 700 responses across all our open access books on Fulcrum. And uh, we ask in the survey, and you can take the survey yourselves, um, but we ask in the survey uh, about how the reader uh, discovered the book, um, how they uh, then used the book, um, and then anything else about what they're feeling. So when we ask, how did you find out about the book for Lever Press titles, uh, we do see the disproportionate importance of Facebook for open access titles. And we've seen this in other contexts as well, especially Facebook groups. So this is a great place uh, to be sharing information about Lever Press titles. We also see um, uh, Twitter being very important um, and LinkedIn being important for uh, professional users. So uh, open book publishers, for example, they see quite a lot more usage on LinkedIn than we do. And that is because they have a number of books for practitioners. So the professional audience lives on LinkedIn and that's where they expect to find books. Um, our audience seems to live a lot on Facebook, but of course this is a very small sample. What's really encouraging to me is the library catalog, and it does show that many of you are taking that step of putting the books in your library catalogs, because that is much lower usually uh, in other open access book publishing contexts. The why are you interested in this book, we just don't have very many responses yet, So, uh, but that is a question we ask. Next slide, please. Uh, what are you going to do with it now you have it? Uh, I mean, this is, again, a small sample, uh, but it's striking the green 31%. Uh, the whole book looks fascinating. I'm going to read it all. So, you know, this is really interesting from the point of view of the idea that uh, for reading uh, a whole book, uh, scholars are, download, are going to print. Um, in the case of Lever Press, they're not. And it's, it's, uh, it's interesting... Um, uh, and encouraging because it suggests that the reading experience we're offering is good. Um, and uh, uh, that, that was kind of uh, interesting. Something else entirely, there was quite a number of people responding. Uh, the answers were not very useful uh, there, um, except that some people say they're um, they've been, an e, uh, a link has been shared directly with them, maybe by the author. Uh, so. Um, uh, th uh, this data will become more interesting as we get more responses. 
Uh, Mike has put a very important note in uh, the catalog. Uh, on the Lever Press About page, we do have a link uh, for downloadable MARC records. And those are professionally put together by the University of Michigan Library Technical Services catalogers, and they're extremely high quality. So even if you are getting uh, DOAB records into your catalog, turning it on through uh, the community zone in uh, Alma, for example, you will find much higher quality uh, MARC records directly from us. And we're talking to Ex Libris about making sure you can turn those on as well in your catalog uh, next week. Okay, next slide, please. So the story behind the outmetrics, again, these are a, a small sample, but these are some of the, the tweets. Um, and it gives a sense, uh, if you look at the outmetric numbers, and if you drill down from the outmetric donut that you'll find showing on the Lever Press uh, titles, you'll really get a sense of how these books are being used. And um, I, uh, I just chose a few that I thought were nice little quotes. Um, and what's interesting also is that these are people with a number of followers. So these are people who have high numbers of followers in the you know, 3,000 plus. Um, and uh, a shot there, that is, yes, a Society for History of Technology. One thing we've really seen is the edited collections are getting a lot more attention because each of the contributors is also broadcasting to their networks. Um, and, uh, the, uh, and to their societies. And Heather Tressler, that was interesting to me because there was kind of an, an online conversation uh, going on between scholars about this book. It had actually, this was about the Elizabeth Bishop, Bishop um, book. And it was interesting to see a live online conversation going on between scholars about the content based on um, uh, their reading of the book. And then, yes, <laughs> as Mike uh, comments, it's, it's kind of interesting to see Patricia Sway at the Mellon Foundation uh, uh, actively following Lever Press titles. And uh, this uh, was nice that she uh, re you know, retweeted one of the books, which is about the, uh, the leadership of liberal arts uh, colleges um, pedagogy um, in this space. Okay, um, that's me. Thank you very much.